tripod, whatever the uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tripod, tripod, tripod. 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 it works. But um, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you to Dr. Don for making this possible. Um, I remember coming here when she first opened up this space, and she's always been a great friend to me. Dr. Don, thank you. Um, before we get started, what would you like to say about Bones if I Oh, well, so bone health is very important. You want to have your time? So from, my, so from my from my perspective with naturopathic medicine and acupuncture, I'm always looking at the body using both Eastern and Western medicine. So it's so there's, so there's a lot to decipher from it and pick from it. And I was just giving out, um, which I owe you also, Heather, um, uh, little gift bags with t dental health in it because our teeth are so important. Our GI tract starts in the mouth. Our teeth are very telling of our overall health. Uh, and then from a naturopathic perspective, I'm always thinking nutrition, lifestyle, and supplements, things that can help, as well as acupuncture, which can also help, thinking about the kidney meridian and how our kidneys are functioning, which affect our bone health. Um, so as, our, as we age, we're looking at supporting the kidney meridian in Chinese medicine. That's one perspective also. Um, when it comes to nutrition, so over in the corner there, I, was made, I made a bunch of energy balls, and there's a bunch of nutrients in it. As we know, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D uh, are all really important nutrients to get um, in our body, vitamin D specifically from the sun or we'll, su or we'll supplement with it, uh, and calcium and magnesium also. So in those energy balls are pumpkin seeds and good nutrients in there, cooking cow that also has magnesium in it so oftentimes when people are craving a lot of chocolate I'm thinking they must be deficient in magnesium but let's test blood work and see you know if we're able to do it or clinically I can assess and say oh maybe take an Epsom salt bath to get some magnesium maybe you want to add some um, good nutrients into your food some leafy greens that have that calcium magnesium also in it uh, and zinc is really important. So we don't think of zinc actually, and zinc helps with bone remineralization. And zinc, when I'm also uh, prescribing zinc for gut health, because zinc helps our gut lining. So oftentimes if people have dysbiosis in the gut or leaky gut, zinc can be one of those nutrients that helps. So not only does it help the lining, when you think of tissues, our bone is a tissue, so you want to support it in that way. So that's another nutrient. Um, and, then some, and then we're always thinking, antioxidants, so colorful foods to help our bones, um, decreasing inflammation in all sorts of ways, which I'm always talking about with patients, um, specializing in autoimmune, it's a big thing. Um, so always decreasing that inflammation, all different, and it presents in all different ways in people, right? So pain, fatigue, swelling are always telltale signs um, of inflammation and always trying to decrease that. And then avoiding things, so avoiding, if so, sodium is an issue, if there's high blood pressure, salt can help, ex uh, unfortunately, to excrete calcium from the bones, so a high sodium diet, sodium diet is not good for you, definitely want to avoid it for that reason. Caffeine also, perhaps, if that can have the same effect as well, um, and the acidity in it also. So actually, I'm going to read this little abstract, um, because I'm always talking about yeah, they're saying with caffeine, an excess of 16 ounces can cause a little bit. So if someone's already experiencing bone loss, mm -hmm. caffeine, an excess of 16 ounces a day can actually cause more bone loss. So, so that, when you go to Starbucks, you only get a tall. Yeah. <laughs> you can still, so maybe you can still have it, you know, and if you enjoy it. So it's always in moderation, moderation sometimes, yes. right? So things to think about. Um, soda can also perhaps lead to bone loss if it's too much phosphorus, and sometimes we can get that from soda that can be a cause of that also. So things to think about. Um, so it's just so bad, no, you should be drinking that. But anyway, so what this, there was an interesting article. So I'm always advocating for plant-based and I always have people saying, why, 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 why? And I'm not gonna be here telling someone that you have to be totally 100% plant-based, but I always encourage getting more veggies into the diet, right? Those leafy greens are a really great source of both calcium and magnesium that we get into our bodies. Um, but this one talks about the role of low acid load in a vegetarian diet on bone health. So I wanted to read a little bit because I thought it was interesting. And their wording, I'm not totally on par with, so I'm going to make some changes to it as they were talking. Um, vegetarian and vegan diets contain low amounts of protein and calcium. Wrong. They contain adequate amounts of protein and calcium, but that's okay. I like the rest of what they had to say, so I'm just correcting them there. For this reason, they are supposed to cause low 
bone mineral density and osteoporosis, but this is not the case. The absence of osteoporosis or low bone mineral density can be explained by the low acid load of these diets. Low acid load is correlated with lower bone resorption and a higher bone mineral density. So people don't often think about that. Um, it is linked to high intake of potassium rich nutrients such as fruits and vegetables. The total nutritional acid load, which not only depends on the potassium content of the nutrition, was recently assessed in several studies on vegetarian vegan diets was found to be low or absent, while the diet of Western style omnivores produces more, uh, produces daily acid load. This may be an important factor for the protection of vegetarians from osteoporosis. So what's interesting, if anyone's interested in learning more, there's a woman, Brenda Davis. She's in her 60s or 70s now, and she had a plant-based diet from, from when she was in her 30s. And her bone mineral density plateaued so it didn't get as high as some of the Western diet, people who are using Western diets, but it stayed at that level and sustained. So her bone mineral density is like off the charts great. And doctors are like scratching their heads and can't figure it out while hers isn't dropping. So it's just one, it's just an example of how the benefits of it, how, how it can really help longevity, you know, and, and what you're doing. So obviously you can't, you know, whatever age you may be at now, you can't reverse it, but the, the younger you are, the more plants that you're getting in can really have that benefit of, of supporting your bone health. So it actually can help my about. cholesterol as well. And can help cholesterol, sure, and, yeah. and all these wonderful things. So veggies, 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 veggies. So just a way to get them more into your diet, and however that may work for you. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And then with lifestyle, you're going to talk a whole bunch of stuff about movement, which is really good. I'm always talking about the lymphatic system supporting the tissues from outside, um, supporting lymphatic system. Exercise helps to move that lymphatic system from the inside, which is really important for tissue healing and moving. I was just showing the, the inversion table, which helps to just move blood around and move you upside down, get blood flowing in all different ways, which is great. Um, and then supplements. So there's a form of calcium. So there's the typical forms of supplements that you'll find that have calcium. That calcium will deposit into the arteries, which is not where you want calcium to go. When you eat calcium from a diet, from whole foods, mixed with magnesium and all nutrients, that calcium goes into your bones. There's only one type of calcium, it's called microcrystalline hydroxyapatite concentrate, <laughs> MCHC, um, that deposits into the bones. And that's the only form of uh, calcium that I will prescribe. Um, the one that I use is company, um, well actually I won't say it since we're recording, but anyways, that's the form that you want to look for in your supplements. So if you're taking any kind of bone support, um, you want to make sure it's that kind, the MCHC. And then other nutrients, strontium and boron are really good. The caveat to that, if you're taking them, you want to make sure they're not both in one supplement. So the supplement that I have has boron in it and then you take strontium at another time of day, you take it away from it. Uh, and both of those, you know. So now help. if your calcium in your blood work is within normal limits, is it even necessary to do that? Um, so, well, so really you're you're getting the most calcium up until age 30, and then you're constantly, to, to it, it, there's a loss of it. So you can, I mean, I, I always say exercise is really the best, like if we're going to mm -hmm. talk about nutrition versus like one of the best ways to support the bones, exercise, strength training, and all that stuff. And just getting a pro eating a healthy diet full of nutrients. And if you need to, if you if you're showing, if you have bone loss, you have osteopenia, I would start supporting that with some MCHC, you know, and getting that in the diet. Certainly, and that can help. Um, you know, and then watching all the other organs, making sure your kidneys are okay, liver. You know. So besides in, uh, bone density test, how how else can you tell if you have that? There is a urine test called entelopeptides, so I'll measure that over time. It says that the first one isn't diagnostic, but over time it can show. Mm -hmm. So I'll use it. It's, um, but um, if people do do the DEXA scan, then you just, you know you have some miso soup or something like that just to offset the radiation. If you have that, yeah. but um, you know sometimes people just like that. That that could be a most accurate way of doing it. So I don't have a problem if my patients go for that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then homeopathy can be really good. So I love homeopathy. And then some, uh, so homeopathic remedies.
remedies look like this. So I'm often prescribing this to patients. This one's Arnica for healing if you're injured, but based on what any kind of symptoms a patient might be having, there's all different types. There's one called silica, which is good. So if someone has a lot of teeth issues, a lot of cavities, dental issues, and they're also weak in their bones, um, silica might be one. There's different, and then there's a whole, there are all different ones based on uh, all types of questions that I'll ask people. So homeopathy workup is a little different than a naturopathic workup, um, but I do enjoy it. And um, I said I was gonna talk a little bit about the naturopathic medicine. So real quick, it's all about the root cause. A lot of people are familiar with what I do. Um, and it's just full medical intake, really trying to, so that I can truly understand the patient. And all the questions are really important. Like you, you might not think it, but you know, um, how your mood is, how your sleep is, you know, all these things um, really do add up for a practitioner to really assess you and give some quality feedback for creating a health plan that's, um, you know, pretty, pretty detailed and we work off of it, you know, to bring the body back to balance. Um, and then testing all in lab work, minerals and vitamins, all these nutrients that really, vitamin D is so huge, you know, with bone health and just overall health, mood health, um, gut health. You know, and so many people on the East Coast are deficient in it. So these are, you know, all the things I look yeah, at. Is it true they got to take the D with the K in order for it to It helps be for maximum absorption, yes. It mm -hmm. could. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. just to speak to that, I went through Dr. Donson's intake process. It's very, very thorough. Um, so kudos, because most most doctors and people that you see don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's nice getting to know each Having that human connection. <laughs> For sure. It's good for the patients and makes my job fun, so <laughs> and I enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, so on that, so I'm so glad that it was actually his decision. You know, he decided that he wants to talk about bone health, and so I'm very happy that he decided to ask me, so, you know, to have him here. And I'm very happy to have him here. He is a wonderful personal trainer. He owns Lotus Fitness. And, um, you know, helping people to heal, you know, and live their lives and exercise pain-free is his passion. He has wonderful educational videos. He loves educating the public, so I'm very happy to have him here today. Yeah, thank you mm -hmm. for having me. Sure. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, she was mentioning the root cause of things, and Dr. Don, Don and I see things very similarly in, in terms of that, right? Um, our body is a system. We start with, like, one cell in the womb, and then we grow to be what you guys all see today. Uh, and so I wanted to go around, since we're like a small, intimate group, do you guys mind if we go around and just say each other's names? Is that, is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, so my name is Ahmed. Josephine. Deborah. Deborah. Dee Dee. Scott. Kathy. Sharon. Cheryl. Okay, very good. Yeah, so the reason why I want everybody to know each other's names is because I'm about to tell you an embarrassing story. When I was younger, uh, 10-year-old girl almost broke my finger. And I was at the Great Wolf Lodge in Pennsylvania. Has anybody ever been there? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's basically like this indoor water park, and it's beautiful. Um, long story short, they have these pools there that have these statues. There was one that I noticed that it was a turtle statue. And at the time I was young, I wanted to go up on top of that turtle and just have some fun. But there was one problem. There was this 10-year-old girl on the turtle, and she didn't want anybody on it but her, right? But I wanted to get on that thing. That thing was so amazing to me. It reminded me of uh, this TV show I used to like, Pokemon, if anybody knows Pokemon. Uh, and, so, and so it was so interesting to me because I wanted to get on there, and she was like, no. But I had to get on there. So I tried to climb on there, and then bam, she hit my finger right here like this. Jammed it. And so this finger, I immediately felt immense pain. I went to the doctor, and he told me that I had fractured a bone over here, right? And so I knew there was something wrong. Um, but I ended up just putting a splint on there, and I was really young at the time. I didn't do physical therapy or anything like that, and it was all good, right? I didn't notice anything wrong with this here up until about a couple of years ago. I was doing this exercise that involved a, a grip, gripping something, and I ended up feeling this horrible wrist pain that would go along over here, right? And so I, I, was, I was curious, right? I was like, why is my wrist randomly hurting me? It wasn't until I went to go see my mentor in Columbus, Ohio, we were working on some exercise things. And you know, um, similarly to what Dr. Don does, there's a whole intake 
process that I go through. I, I do some of that stuff with my clients as well. But anyway, I told him about this fractured bone, right? And he was like, huh, okay, let's check out the muscles and how those things are working there. And what we noticed is there was a difference in the way that this finger could move versus this finger from the right side to the left side of my body. So there was a difference in how much it can move, meaning distance-wise, and then there was a difference in the strength levels between this finger and that finger. So we were like, huh, why don't we try exercising the muscles over here and seeing what happens. Lo and behold, we did that. I went to go work out, and I didn't feel any of that pain anymore. Right? And so it's kind of wild how bones can impact your body and then impact the stuff that you love to do. Right? And so before I really delve in, because today we're here to learn about how to keep bones strong, yes? Yeah? So yes. when you guys think about bones, how do you think about bones? Anybody? Hold up our muscles. Hold up our muscles. Very nice. Yeah, it sounds like you were going to say something. No, I was going to say bones. That's what I think of when I think of bones. Mr. Bones. <laughs> Mr. Bones. Yes. You know? yeah. I think of like foundation. <laughs> foundation. Ah, I like that word. Okay. Foundation. Hold up our muscles. Yeah, um, I think about a lot of the same things. And it wasn't until I took an anatomy class at Stony Brook, which is where I went to school, that I realized that bones were more than I ever thought. Like, I realized that they had nerves in them, they had blood supply to them, and I was so confused because I just thought they were skeletons and bones, and that's pretty much it. So these things are living things. They change from year to year, and it's really interesting. Um, and so... For anybody here, is anybody here concerned about osteoporosis or so? Or just... Okay. And arthritis, yeah. And arthritis, sure, sure. And so we'll definitely get to that, Didi. Um, is anybody anxious about tripping, falling, and breaking a bone? Not yet. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken as we speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm just said nervous <laughs> about falling. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and so it happens, right? You guys aren't alone. Um, and so. Ultimately, uh, I hear things like this from people all the time, right? When people come to me, uh, they start telling me things like they're concerned about breaking a bone and having their independence being taken away from them. Others say that they're worried about arthritis and the impact that it could have on doing the things that they love to do, whether that's hiking, whether it's playing with their grandkids, whether it's just walking their dog. Um, and then some just say that they're anxious about their mobility, as they age and how it's going to impact their quality of life, right? And so all of these things that you guys have mentioned here today is a completely fair game when it comes to what's going on with bones and the fears that people have surrounding their bones, their body, their mobility, and ultimately their quality of life, right? And so a lot of, a lot of what goes on with bones um, changes from year to year, right? Every year, your bone density and muscle strength after 30 decreases anywhere from 1 to 2 percent, right? Dr. Don touched on this a little bit in terms of calcium levels decreasing after the age of 30, right? Just aging, it happens. We're all going to go through it, right? Um, and so, I, if you guys noticed there, I said, I said bone density and I said muscle strength. Raise your hand if you think those two things are connected. I noticed you didn't raise your hand. Tell me more about why you decided not to raise your hand. For me? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just never thought. I never thought it was Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you standing your ground and, and being courageous and talking about that because I think when it comes to a lot of these topics, there's a lot of confusion out there about really what goes into bone health, right? Um, and so if you guys don't mind, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Astronauts in the 60s and 70s, when they would come back from space, they'd come back and people would have to help them off of the spaceship, right? Does anybody here know why? Because they didn't have the gravity. Gravity, 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 yeah, right? What is gravity? Gravity is this force that we have to constantly deal with, right? All a force is is a push or a pull, right? And so we're constantly dealing with gravity. So you guys are all doing some variety of resistance training right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so astronauts, what they're doing now is they're putting exercise machines on spaceships to mitigate those effects, right? And so I mentioned force, and I mentioned bones, and I mentioned being able to move well. Why don't we start off by talking about bones, okay? So bones are a lot like a 
number two eraser on one of those old school pencils. You guys know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, once you get that pencil, the eraser is like, it, it looks almost shiny, right? And it's like in this beautiful cylinder. What happens after a while of using that pencil? Draw what happens down. to that eraser? Draws down. It wears down, right? Same thing happens with your bones, right? And so bones are, are, are really interesting because what ends up happening is they wear down as a result sometimes of misalignment. And so when I say misalignment, what do I mean by that? Your bones, they fit into each other like puzzle pieces, right? This thing fits really perfectly into this thing. All these things fit really well onto one another, right? But sometimes if there is misalignment within the bones, what ends up happening is you end up getting more force on one part of the bone than the other one, and then you start having issues. So what do I mean by that? Do you guys see how like there's space between this bone? If over time, this part of the bone just moved on this part of the bone, right? The, the top bone versus the bottom bone, what would end up happening is this part of the bone would wear down faster, right? So there would be friction on that thing, and over time it would wear down faster. I want you to picture it like this. Have you guys ever seen like the magician and nails trick? No? Okay, so I'll tell you about it. So imagine there's a 100 pound magician on 100 nails, right? If that 100 pound magician laid on 100 nails, what would happen to that magician? If you guys think nothing would happen, raise your hand, okay? Okay, and if you think that would be bad news for the magician, raise your hand. Okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, okay. Um, how about this? What if the 100 pound magician laid on a bed of eight nails? Who thinks good things would happen to that magician? It'd be right worse. It'd be worse. <laughs> yeah, why would it be worse, Scott? More pounds per nail. Yes, exactly, right? Same thing happens with the bones. If there is more force going through this part of the bone because it's misaligned, then this thing is going to wear down faster, and then that's when arthritis happens, right? Okay. So we talked about arthritis. We talked about the bones. We talked about force and... The good news about bones, you guys want to hear the good news about bones? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so bones, right? If you notice, there are all these like nooks and crannies on this thing. Why do you think that is? Lubrication. Lubrication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mobility, man. Yeah. Mobility. Flexibility. Yeah. Flexibility. Yeah, yeah. And all, all of these are great answers. And, when I think about this, I think about all of these landmarks on bones, right? All of these things over here that you're seeing, they're there for a specific purpose, which is to attach the muscle to the bone, right? So muscles, they move bones, right? And the bones are specifically made so that muscles can attach to them, right? And so can I share with you what the top three reasons are for muscles helping with having strong bones? Yeah? Okay, okay. So reason number one, muscles, they stimulate bone. Okay? So what does that mean? Every time that you work your muscle, you're stimulating your bone, which is good news. And the reason that I say that is because there's this thing called Wolf's Law that just says that your bones adapt to the stress placed on them. Said differently, if you put force through your bones, your bones are going to get stronger, which means that they're going to be less likely to break, mm -hmm. which means that you're not going to have problems like low bone density and all that stuff that we don't want, right? Okay, so that was reason number one. Muscles stimulate bones, which is good because then stronger bones, higher bone density, less likelihood of getting injuries, okay? Number two, muscles absorb force, okay? So, Imagine there was a president of some sort of country, and there's a bodyguard with that president. Do you guys think that president would want a small and scrawny bodyguard, or a big and muscular bodyguard? Number two. Yeah. I, I, feel like, I feel like sometimes people would be like, oh, it depends, is that small and scrawny guy really good at like, defending the president? They're like, this isn't a trick question, right? Um, yeah, the, the big and strong muscly guy would be good, right? Same thing with your bones. Your bones, Mr. President in this case, very much prefers to have strong muscles surrounding it so that it can protect the bone, right? Okay, so kind of retract here. Muscles stimulate bones, which means better bone density, which means less likelihood of breaking bones. Uh, reason number two, 
they help absorb force, which takes stress off of the bone and into the muscle, which means less wear and tear on the bone because more of that force is going to the muscles. Okay. Reason number three. Muscles, they help you with mobility, right? And so they help move you. And when muscles help move you, they also create positions and alignment within the bones, right? And so if your muscles, because your bones are created to move by the force provided by the muscles, your muscles can help create alignment within the bones. And Mr. Bones is about to fall. We don't want that to happen. All right, thank you, Mr. Bones. So muscles create alignment within the bones, which means there's less of a chance for stuff like osteoarthritis because of the same idea behind the magician and the nails. There is less pound per um, pound of force per surface area. There. Okay. All right. So again, reason number one: muscle stimulate bones, increase bone density, lower likelihood of injury. Number two: muscles absorb force, less wear and tear on the bone instead it goes to the muscle. Number three: muscles create alignment, which means uh, safer and stronger joints. Okay. I mentioned that I give you the top three reasons for how muscles can help uh, with bone strength, but I'm going to give you guys a bonus, okay? So bonus. Bonus is muscles can help you with your range of motion, which just means how far you can move a limb in a certain position. And it helps you with strength. And it can do this stuff really quickly, too, okay? When muscles are stronger, they can absorb more force, okay? And so one thing that I work on with my clients is how can we get people strong, right? And so strength and range of motion are very intimately related. And when I say that, a lot of people ask me more questions about that. Because when a lot of people think about range of motion, they think about stuff like yoga, right? They think about stuff like flexibility and stretching. Instead, since your muscle move bones, a stronger muscle can move bones further, right? Um, it, so, so this whole idea behind muscles strength and muscle range of motion connecting is super important. And so if you guys don't mind, what we're going to do together here is put a little bit of strength into your bodies and see if that changes your range of motion with a specific movement. So who wants to participate? We're going to have everybody do this. Um, and if you feel discomfort as you do this, just stop right away. Okay. Uh, but what I'd like for all you to do, if you guys don't mind, is move to the edge of your chair. Yeah, I recommend having your feet on the ground if you can. Is it okay if yours is rolling? That, that won't be too bad. Okay. No, you're very okay. So what are the muscles working against to provide that range of motion? Words, what's limiting the motion in the first place? Yeah, it could be a whole bunch of things. I mean, it could just be a strength issue, right? Uh, on, on the shorter end of things, we're talking about people who maybe they don't have enough strength to move their limb. Right, and then on the other, uh, and then there's a whole spectrum of things that could be happening. Meaning, people's bones don't allow for a specific range of motion because bones are a lot like uh, your fingerprint, right? Meaning, everybody has a unique bone structure. Um, and I, so I appreciate you asking that question. If you guys don't mind, from now, let's keep our questions to the end because I want to answer all those questions for you. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So let's go like this, and then what I'd like you to do is slowly turn your upper body, your torso, and your torso only to the right as far as you can go. And I just want you to notice how far you go. All right, and then come back to the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I want you to slowly go to the left. And notice how far you go. And then come back to the middle. Okay, so as I went to the left, I almost cramped up here. Um, but did any of you guys notice the difference between going to the right and to the left? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just being, what did you notice? I went further on my left. You went further on your left. Okay. Somebody else said yes. Left further. You went yeah. further on your left, yeah. so more limited on the right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I have more pain to my right. You have more pain to your right. Okay. So, Didi, what I suggest is to avoid doing the rest of the stuff, just because I don't want you to feel pain. We're here really to learn and everything. Okay. okay? Um, ultimately, it's, it's up to you what you want to do. But, uh, okay. So, here's what we're going to do. If you guys felt a difference between the right and left, so for you, Kathy, for example, I want you to try going to the right. For you, Josephine, I want you to try to go to the right. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the side that you felt was more limited, and we're going to do this together, okay? Okay. 
So go to the side that you felt was more limited in its motion and turn all the way to that end position. Once you get to that end position, I want you to squeeze your bum and squeeze your abs as hard as you can for three, two, one, and then come back to the middle. Okay, are we all still doing okay? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna do that two more times. Let's turn to that limited side, turn all the way, as much motion as you can get. Squeeze your bum, squeeze your abs, hold for three, two, one. All right, come back to the middle. We're gonna do that just one more time, okay? All right, ready? And twist that upper body, squeeze the bum, squeeze the abs, squeeze those muscles for one, two, three. Okay, come back. We're gonna give you guys a little bit of a break. How was that? Okay. okay, very good, very good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to retest our range of motion, okay? So I want you guys to, let's all go to the right first. Twist as far as you can go to the right. And then let's come back to the middle. And then let's all go to the left. And then come back to the middle. Okay. Did anybody notice any differences between when they first tested it and then after those little exercises? Yeah, what did you notice? I did. I felt like I went further. You went further on the side that you were exercising it into? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. How about you, Pat? Same. 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 Both sides. Yeah. Both sides? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, and so that right side that was limited, you felt like you could go further now. Okay. All right. Very cool. And so what we did there is we did an exercise. This is something called short-term potentiation. Basically what it means is because your muscles are a lot like a dimmer switch where you can kind of just turn them on or turn them off, we turned on those specific muscles that weren't working exactly the same as those other muscles and we made these short-term changes where now you're feeling like you can move more and move further, right? Okay, now one of the things in my whole career is about how can we get these short-term changes to go to long-term changes, right? And that's obviously, that's where the whole exercise process comes in, right? Um, so what I wanna do with you guys now is tell you how to exercise for everlasting bo bone strength. Does that sound good to you? Yes. Okay. Number one, number one, train slowly, okay? So for this, I would like somebody to help me out. Does anybody wanna help me out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you please stand here? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take a sip real quick. Okay, go for it. How's everyone doing? Good? Very good. Good. Thank you for filling my time. I appreciate that. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want you to do, um, so you're going to hold this like this. Okay. Imagine this is a this is a dumbbell or something, okay? But ultimately this is just force, right? And exercise is just force on anatomy, okay? Cool. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this and you're going to do three repetitions really fast. What I want you to do is just bend your elbow. Okay. So bend your elbow. Okay? Okay. Got it. I'm telling you what to do or I just bend. Ready, set, go! One, two, three. On a scale of one to five effort-wise, one being easy as pie, five being impossible to do one more, what was, what does that feel like? One. Like a one? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do it on the same arm. Okay. Let's actually uh, give your muscles a few seconds to rest so that this is like genuine science. Okay. Genuine. Yeah. <laughs> because, um, so that was low effort. Okay. Cool. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take 10 seconds on the way up. And then you're going to take 10 seconds on the way down. Okay? Can we all count together? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So start down here, and you're going to end Dr. Don over here. Okay. Okay? So at all the right, end of 10, up. yeah. Okay? Ready? One, One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more. 
So why is that important? Why is speed important? When people are looking to build bone density by stimulating their muscles, what we want to do and what I do with my clients is typically we'll do slower repetitions. The reason for that is this. Um, there's this thing, Newton's Law, right? He, he says that when things are steady, they don't want to move. And when things are moving, they want to keep moving, right? So there's this thing called inertial effects. A lot of times what I see People do this at the gym all the time. They take shortcuts. And so what do I mean by that? And, and honestly, when I say this, I'm not saying this as like a negative thing. Our brain, it wants to be lazy. If your brain can figure out a way to be lazy, it'll do that. It wants to preserve energy. It's so true. Yeah, so it's, it's fair game, right? But what I see a lot of people doing at the gym is they'll do repetitions that look like this. Oh. Right? Instead of what Dr. Don was doing there with, with you know, with a specific speed, with intention, right? And so why is that problematic? Well, when you launch stuff, when you go really fast in the beginning here and launch this weight up, let's say this was five pounds. For this first inch or two, this, is, this weight is actually going to turn to about 20 pounds because we're adding speed. And then for the rest of the movement, it's probably gonna be around like zero, okay? So what does that mean? That means that your muscles get challenged for a small fraction of that exercise, as opposed to doing it slowly, where now this five pound weight is staying five pounds the entire time. And so your muscle for the duration of the repetition, this whole time is being challenged and it's being challenged at a consistent weight, right? And so number one, train slower, avoid launching things, okay? All right, very good. Uh, number two, I mentioned this word before, training with intention. Are you guys ready to do some exercise? Yeah? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, stand up, please. Okay. Had, um, who, okay, so we're gonna do something called a squat. Okay, it's a lot like just sitting, okay? If you'd like to hold on to something, I recommend holding on to something in front of you. Right, so maybe something like this, or like Mr. Bones is helping me out here. But if not, that's okay too. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's the first thing we're gonna do, okay? And you guys can just copy me. You're gonna stand about shoulder width apart, find a comfortable stance, and then what you're going to do from here is you're going to sit down, and then once you're, you're as low as you can go, I want you to hold on there for a second, okay? So. Not on the chair, like in the air. No, yeah, let's oh, stay uh, like we're levitating on that. Okay, yes, yes, hold it for a second. Okay, notice what you're feeling here, and then come on up. Okay, okay, everybody's cracking. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Who, who here felt, uh, who here felt like tension on their thighs? felt some thighs. Quad. 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 Sure. Yeah, you felt quads. Did anybody here feel like their their like muscles were working? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go down in the squat, and I want you to notice whether or not you're putting more weight on the right foot or the left foot. Okay. So let's go down into our squat and just kind of. Tune in. Hey, am I putting more weight on my right versus my left? Am I not? And then stand right back up. Squat it on me. Like, am I going like this? So, like, what squat am I doing? Yeah, yeah, that that looked really good there. Did you notice the difference between putting weight on the right or left? Sometimes people don't. Sometimes people do. Okay, very good. Did anybody notice anything like that? You did. My right. You did, Beverly. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes people will like it. Sometimes people won't. 
Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a strategic exercise by using friction, the force of friction, to change the way that these muscles are working, okay? So bear with me here, but same stance, same everything. When we go down into the squat, and we're gonna do three of these, what I want you to think about doing is I want you to think about spreading the floor with your feet. So although your feet are going to stay in the same exact position, meaning they're not going to move, you're going to think about spreading them apart, right? So like at a very high level, if I, if I would move my feet, they would move out like that, right? To the sides, okay? All right, so again, what you're doing here is we're gonna sit down into our squat. As you're sitting down and on the way up, so both down and up, you're gonna spread the floor with your feet. Okay, spread the feet to the outside, let's do it. Spread the feet to the outside, and then when you stand up, spread the feet to the outside as well. Tear the floor apart. Yep, stand up. We're gonna do two more of the we're gonna do two more of those. Yeah, let's let's oh. go. Let's do it. Yeah, spread the floor with your feet. Keep doing that. Feet to the outside. One more. One more. Feet to the outside. Spread them. Spread the feet. Spread the feet. Stand up even as you stand up. Okay. All right. Would somebody share their experience with me? I thought it was easier. You thought it was easier? Yeah, by feeling I'm spreading. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I thought I was okay. working out more yeah. of I my uh, more buttocks and hips. More buttocks and hips? I felt more tension. You felt more tension for the there. first time. Yeah. So it's interesting. People are having different experiences. But I also feel lightheaded yeah. when I get up. Is that okay? I feel lightheaded yeah. when I go up. Like yeah. you said, so, very structured. Uh, dehydration. Yeah. Are, you, are you holding your breath, Joseph? Maybe. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, you have a choice. You're on this next one. Breathe. Okay. Or <laughs> <laughs> stay alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I felt more stable. You felt more stable. Yeah. Like I felt. Right? Yeah. And I too. felt like it was more of a whole body experience mm -hmm. than just using any one isolated muscles. It was like it was a, whole, a, a more full engagement. Very nice. All right. Thank you all for sharing that. We're going to do a couple more quick pause. Do you mind if I just move this for the video? Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. So you guys ready for, okay, let's do this. So now when we go down, I want you to think about bringing the feet inwards. Now, sometimes when I say this, people, they end up uh, collapsing their arches like that. Avoid that, right? Instead, keep your feet completely steady, but just think about bringing them together, okay? <laughs> and so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do three repetitions. As you sit down, bringing the feet together actively, and then as you stand up, feet together actively. Okay, here we go. Let's do, we're going to do three. One, yep, feet inwardly, and then as you stand up, feet inwardly. Yeah. You're trying to bring your feet together. Let's do a couple more. Feet. Bring them in towards each other. Yes, as you stand up. Same thing. One more. Bring those feet inwardly. Feet inwardly even as you stand up. Okay. Okay. Somebody share their experience with me? I think it was a lot more work. It was a lot more work. <laughs> Yeah. It is a lot more work. Yeah. I yeah. also felt it in my knees pushing out, but not pushing in. Okay, you felt your knees pushing out, but not pushing in. Yeah. Okay. I felt it like in here. You felt it in there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, basically what I'm hearing is that your experience is changing by, th by thinking mm -hmm. about what you're doing with your feet differently. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's right? Different. Okay, so uh, we're going to do two more examples. Okay. And so what we're doing here is all we're doing is we're changing the way that we're thinking about the exercise, mm -hmm. right? So, so imagine what we can do if we identify where there are weaknesses in your muscles, because what that means is that there is potentially a weakness in that bone because mm -hmm. that muscle isn't as strong, so there's less force being, uh, being absorbed by that muscle, right? And then think about what can happen if you do strategic exercises to make those muscles strong, make those bones strong. So we're gonna do two more here. Okay, uh, for this one, I want you to think about, so imagine these are your, uh, your toes and your feet. I want you to think about scrunching them and pushing them down into the ground, okay? So we're gonna do squats like that. So you're gonna scrunch your toes and push your toes really heavy down into the ground. And so we're gonna do three of these. It's almost like you're trying to dent the front of your shoe. That's how hard you're thinking about pushing. And then stand up. Even as you stand up, you're gonna do this, right? Because sometimes when people do this, they do it on the way down, but on mm -hmm. the way up. Mm -hmm. Do a couple more. 
Toes, toes, toes. Put weight on those toes. Yes, and then stand up. One more. Imagine like you're trying to dent that front of your shoe. Really put pressure on those toes as you stand up. It's skiing. It's like skiing. <laughs> oh, yeah? Interesting. Okay, will somebody share their experience? I feel like I got a little dizzy with that one. You got dizzy with that yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody experience anything different? So we're supposed to be up on a board at your feet. Is that, what, is that what was happening? Well, well that's what I felt like. It's a bit got of a challenge it, balancing. It. Totally, totally, right? It's a different experience. Okay, we're, we're just going to do one more. Mm -hmm. Technically two more, but one more, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so now when we do this, I want you to think about pushing this foot forward, so right foot forward, right? So you're imagining like you're going like this, but in reality, your foot is staying still. And, and for everybody, keep your heels on the ground the whole time too, okay? So heels on the ground, push the right foot forward, and the left foot... You're gonna imagine like you're pushing it back. So it's sort of like That's this really kind of thing is happening. Okay? Uh -huh. But you're gonna keep your feet in the same position uh -huh. as we did all those other squats. Okay. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Right foot forward. Well, it's hard to even back. think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right foot forward, yeah. left foot back. Right foot forward, left foot back. We're gonna do two more. Breathe. 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 One more. I want to move my foot. Yeah. I had a knee injury, so okay. remember the last time I had the brace on? Sure. I have a brace on right now. Too. Oh, you okay. do? Okay. I'm yeah, pulling so, the foot. So if you guys feel any discomfort, just, 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 just stop. Oh, I had a knee replacement. Okay. Oh, jeez. We're better than I'm doing All right. Um, somebody share your experience, please. Doing that one. You're doing a lot of things. Yeah, you're doing a lot more thinking. It's a lot of thinking because you got one foot. But actually, it makes you go slower. Made you go slower. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you're doing the thinking. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I felt like it took the pressure off the, the main ones that I would think I would be using as uh, squat muscles. Interesting. I'm not so even thinking about my thighs wow. anymore. Weird. You felt like the muscles that you well, typically just, feel during a squat right. weren't necessarily yeah. doing the thing there. You felt you felt it in different areas. Right. Okay. Makes sense. All right. The last one we were going to do is we're just switching the feet, but you guys can get it. <laughs> oh, that was a lot. Yes, I don't like it. You know what, Dee Dee, you, you were on to something there. Everybody clap. That was good. <laughs> Very good. All right. We're going to do one more, okay? Uh, not exercise. I mean one more way on how to, um, how to exercise for everlasting bone strength. So the, the last tip is to progress your exercise, right? If you can hold the bottom of a squat for 30 seconds one week, and then the week after that, hold it for 40 seconds. And then the week after that, hold it for 50 seconds. That means your muscles are pulling on your bones for longer, which means that there is more force going through these bones, which means increased bone density, less chance of tripping, falling, and breaking something, right? Progressing your exercise is such an important piece. Now, we just did like a body weight exercise, right? Uh, sometimes it's really challenging to progress body weight exercises. And so that's why I always like to recommend machines. Uh, machines are really good at supporting at supporting your body, and they're really good at like just changing the resistance. Uh, you can go mm -hmm. super low, super high, whatever makes sense for your body. And then just imagine what can happen with the right ways of thinking about doing the exercise and using this idea of intention as you exercise. You can really hone in on what muscles aren't performing in your body, getting them to perform better so that they can absorb more force so that you can have healthier bones throughout your body. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, very, very good guys. So I, I just wanted to mention one more thing here. Um, so I, I worked with a client, her name is Michelle and, uh, every time she would try to go up or down the stairs, she would have to like pause for a second and really get herself ready for that because she didn't feel confident in her balance, mm -hmm. right? And when you think about balance and tripping and falling, these were all things that she was thinking about. Ultimately, we ended up doing balance-specific exercise. We worked on her feet muscles and ankle muscles. Uh, and she ended up telling me um, not too long ago that now when she goes up or down the stairs, she can just do it. She doesn't have to think about it. Um, and she, and it, it, it's so life-changing to, to hear, it's like, when she says that, it's, it's amazing, right? Like going from kind of taking a second and second-guessing yourself to being able to just do something. Um, that's the reason why I, I do what I do. I just want people to move better, feel better, and stay healthy so that they can move forever and do the stuff that they love to do with the people that they love. So uh, thank you guys so much for being amazing participants. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
What questions do you have for me, if any? I just, I, I have just started inner knee pain, and I'm unsure of what exercise to do, or, you know, is it from bone? Is it from, you know, something I did? Because I noticed with yoga, when I go into the kneeling pose, and you try to stretch here, and you, I can't do that anymore, yeah. you know? So I don't know what to do for it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I'm wearing the brace. <laughs> I just started. Gotcha. Yeah, so Didi, that's a good question. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little Absolutely. bit more about that afterward, because um, it sounds like a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, anything? Does posture affect our bones? Does our posture affect our That's a good question, yeah. 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 Or is it the other way around, our bones affect our posture? Right. Especially those cell phones and the computer. Yeah, we'll and down. Like, yeah. Yeah. So a really good question about posture. Uh, when people think about posture, typically they think about this kind of thing. <laughs> Right? Yes. Sit up straight. Yes. Sit up straight. Exactly. Right? Things that yeah. As we're all you. trying to do, you yes, know? Yes, I'm trying to yeah. um, <laughs> The way I think about posture is this. Posture is more about the position that your body's in um, for any given time, right? So mm -hmm. what does that mean? That means that you're in different postures throughout your day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the car, maybe you have, uh, maybe you're leaning mm -hmm. like this. Or, or if, you, if you are a passenger most of the time, maybe you're leaning like this, right? So that's yes. your posture yes. in that moment, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes, and one of the things that I do with clients um, in our assessment is take a look at their posture, uh, standing relative to laying down, and the reason for that is because posture could give us a little bit of insight in terms of where your body wants to lean away from, which means that maybe there's a weakness there that your muscle is trying to stay away from, right? Because your muscle, it's you know, it's sort of like um, on like an Olympic team or something, right? The coach always wants to use the best players, right? Mm -hmm. Your body tries to do the same thing. It wants to use the strongest muscles, right? Um, and so, in terms of in terms of posture affecting bones, totally, right? Because if if say is leaning this way, right, there there is more stress over here on this side than there is on this side. So that idea of like the whole magician on a bed of nails, there's more force now going through over here just because that person is stuck in that posture. So over time, these bones over here they could wear down quicker as a result. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Anything else? No? Okay, very good. Uh, thank you so much once again. Thank you. And, uh, oh, I forgot. So you guys all filled out the survey. Really, really awesome. So um, one thing that I'll do, if it's on there, um, I'll let you guys know. I mean, it was meant to be a raffle. And so basically what I was, uh, what I was offering for the raffle is a complimentary consultation, assessment, report of findings. Since we're a very intimate group today, um, I'll offer that out to all of you. Uh, nice. So that's a, that's a $350 value. Awesome. Um, and for you guys, it'll be complimentary. So a, a thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Does that take place here? Yeah, no, oh, so that's actually a really good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go? Oh, we're in the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I work out of the Omni building. Are you guys familiar with that place? Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty far. Cool. 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 And Uniondale. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if that makes sense, uh, we can talk a little bit more. Um, you guys uh, you guys may have put your information out there, uh, and we'll talk further from there. But thank you. Thank you, Dr. Don. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. How can we contact you? Give me a second. So, a whole bunch of things.